Hello and welcome to my channel. My name's Carol Manning and in this video I'll be doing part two of painting the donkey. Now part one I gave the donkey a first wash and first paint of fur hairlines and I worked on the eye. In this part two I'm going to be working on the muzzle and the ears and I'll be picking it up from where I left off in part one and then there'll be another two parts I think after this where I paint the rest of the face head and then when I do the mane and the neck so it's looking like it's going to be a four part one altogether so as I said this picks up straight away from where part one left off Okay, so I'm beginning to work now on the muzzle. Um, so I'm going to start by putting some greys down, I think. I'm going to start with getting the mouth in. The mouth, you can't really see any details of like tongue or the anything much so I'm just gonna go and yeah, I've got like these bumpy bits coming along where the creases around the mouth are so I'm gonna go and put those in and then bring that round About there, and it sort of graduates out in greyness, so I'm going to bring that out fairly light to start with, especially around the edges. In fact, I made that too dark. I will probably need to add some white over the top of this at some point. move my palettes onto the top of the painting. It's got tissue on top of it so it should keep it clean. But it saves me keep putting my hand over the picture to get the palettes. So I'm going to put some of those lines in and then just go over that with a grey, sorry for banging the camera, I'll try not to bang the camera, <laughs> I've got the camera quite low because I want to keep it zoomed in, see if it's going to stay focused and sometimes it can be a bit of a nuisance in a tainster and I'll focus in more on my hand or the brush when it's zoomed in this close. So I'm trying to get some of these graduated colours in and especially down the nostrils. Oh kind of a bit too dark on that part. So if you go too dark just lift it. underneath the nostril, the nose bit there, the nostril bit there. So just a moment trying to work on the shape of it rather than the brush lines. If you like I'm just trying to sculpt the light and dark shades to get the shape of the mouth in. We've got the dark part over there. Not sure this is working me 
basically talking to my, my thoughts out as I go along on this. Hopefully it makes sense. We'll be adding the brush lines over the top of this, but I'd say I'm trying at the moment just to get the light and, light and dark values in. I know the nostrils dark, I'm coming back to that in a minute. Underneath the nostril is quite dark there. Making sense what I'm doing. So I'm trying to remember to talk, but um, I'm having to concentrate quite well on this one bit as well. Well, I don't concentrate on all to certain extent, but some bits require a bit more concentration than others, and this is one of them. Right, so bear with me on the not talking too much bit. So this is going to have the little lines over it in a minute with the hair lines, but um, at the moment I'm just trying to get this sort of sculpted look to it. Which doesn't make any sense to you at the moment, I'm not quite sure, but hopefully it will as we go along. Quite nice pictures of ponies, and this one works out. You never know, I might have a go at horse or horse or pony at some point. You have some nice ones in one of the fields. Um, I go past a walk biscuit, and I'm also talking to the ladies who bring them down a couple of times. They've, there's a stables up there, and they bring the them down but um, they've got fields up by their stables but they've got some older horses um, that don't get ridden or anything anymore and they just bring them down into the lower fields because they're not quite so sloped and because they're old they're in their mid-twenties or something they're not quite um, as stable on their feet as the younger ones so they don't want them falling or anything from the sloped parts so i say they bring them down in there. I lost one last year was a shame but it's, I've been so, quite surprised watching them because well, in the summer months especially when there was the three of them they've also been together for a while they used to work, work so corporately co to keep the flies off of each other. They used to sit down like two either out of the three. You'd have one, two there, one facing the other direction there and they'd use their tails to keep the flies off of each other. I was really impressed with how cooperative they, they were and they worked out how to do that. That might be common for me but I don't 
fairly common behaviour, I don't know, but get a huge amount about horses. Sort of horse being a little bit scared of horses, I think, because um, my sister always loved horses. She was the horse rider of the family. And she took me once when I was quite young. I think it was quite a boisterous horse and I was really scared of falling off. Um, and then, so that's that sort of made me feel a bit that way. And then when I was older, um, I always had dogs. And I was taking my dog through a horse field and uh, this. It was um, a right of way. They went through this field with three three horses in, and they chased us out the field. Um, I think they were curious about the dogs, but um, one of them then got quite. I don't know. It came across as quite aggressive, and so we got chased out of this field. I didn't want them hurting the dogs, and this one was kicking its hind legs quite. A lot, and yeah, so we ended up running across this field to escape it. So, yeah, I've never been that confident as a result with horses. I think it's a combination of that, and um, similar with cows, um, when I was quite young, I think I was about 12 or 13, I was walking my dog that I had then over the station then and in well she wasn't mine she was a family dog across the field which had bullocks in it um, I, was, I was walking around the edge but um, they became curious and all started coming towards us and the dog I had then absolutely freaked about it and I had a lead wrapped around my wrist a few times and she literally dragged me across the field at a run. She was a big dog. And through a barbed wire fence. <laughs> Luckily I didn't hurt myself too much. Um, and out the field. But probably wasn't a bad thing when you hear about these people getting hurt by herds of cows. So perhaps she had a good instincts. Not sure whether she was protecting me or herself, but it was obviously I think it was quite a big size herd of bullocks, so it was probably a good instinct on her part. I'm just get this darker still, this nostril literally goes into a really dark Okay, so we're getting there. Um, I'm actually gonna bring some of these hairlines out on the chin that are there. Some of them are white, but I'm gonna make them black because obviously white's not gonna show up against the edge of the page. Lots of crisscrossing over with these, trying to keep the fine line. And I can say, let's go. Oops. Go slightly lighter because there's lots of creases 
the mouth where And bring some of the fur lines out. And grey, like that. And I'll put those darker lines in. And bring some more of the hairs they have around the nostrils. Right now I'm going to go to reasonably diluted and then start, that's too not diluted enough, Let's dilute it down a bit more and to start with, now it's not a bit diluted enough. I just want to Bring out that, those shadows where the creases in the mouth are. I'm also going to put across these lines that go across there as well. I need to go a bit more like that, but I need to go a bit darker as well. I'll turn it down a bit more. It's just a case of doing it until you've got it the right. It appears to be dark, and then when you add a bit more dark to something else, it then looks too light. So it's just a case of working it the way around.
I'm just making it a bit light and darker still at the beginning. The air trailer, beginning, don't know what's there. In case you wondered, I'm not doing this all over the same day. Well, I've had breaks. This is this bit so far has been on the day in the same day, and I'm actually going to st stop in a minute and pick this up again tomorrow. Um, it's got quite late. Dog wants his dinner. Um, need to husband to be home in half an hour or so, and I do need to clear up and. Wash my palettes and everything, brushes, and get ready to start this again. Pick this up again tomorrow. When the videos are this long, they don't get done in one day very often. I'm not quite sure how long this is going to be. I know I've got probably an hour or two, two or three hours so far, so it's going to be interesting to see how long this one takes in real time, as I said, it normally do them in real time so it's going to be inter interesting to see from my point of view as well darkening that down a little bit more actually put a little bit dark down the middle there some of the areas. I'll not believe Payne's grey. Um, hello, back and I'm restarting this from yesterday. So I wasn't planning on doing it all in one go. And um, I'm going to finish off the muzzle um, and see where we go from there. I've got a different paint. I'm, I've got the colours. I'm happy with the shape of that. I'm going to now work on the fair lines. I've got a different one different colour that I'm just going to try out and see how I get on with that and that's um, neutral tint which is sort of grey with a little touch of um, looks like a purpley colour purpley blue tinge to it so I'm putting some little lines across the length of those mouth creases to start with I've gone down to a 10 stroke zero miniature brush at the moment I was using a 5 stroke zero because I want the hairlines on this part of the body are going to be so small I wanted a tiny brush some of them don't even look like hairlines, they're more like um, Dots. Okay. 
Look at those lines there. Just put some little markings in over the top. Nice and carefully. It's like a grey colour, and this isn't standing out a lot. And I will probably put need to put a darker one on top of this, but I quite like the effect of this. Starting to put in those little marks, and as you can see with this neutral tint, it's really not standing out very much, which is actually what I wanted. I don't want, I'm going to go over with a more of a grey, or possibly the indigo, not indigo, sorry, Payne's grey, which has got a lot of blue to it, but at the moment I just want to get these little lines in with a neutral tint. The list of all my paints and brushes and things I use is in, is in the description if you're interested. Probably said that already but I don't know. Can't remember. I do normally put it there, but the neutral tint's the only paint that's so far in any, anyway that's not a Winsor & Newton professional paint, it's a Van Gogh paint. And it's a cheap, cheap paint as well, I'm not sure whether you can get it as a there's the half pens. I've got quite a few tube paints. In fact, I was just looking to top up some of my pan paints. I went into Hobbycraft thinking, oh, they'll have them. They didn't have pan paints, but they did have tube paints um, three for two, so I did end up getting some of the ones I needed. And tubes instead and I'll get some pans when I can find somewhere that does them. I don't really need the pans, it's just I like to keep a set of um I like to keep the pan set, it's easy to use and just take away if I just want that and nothing else. I'm taking a load of tubes as well. I will be bringing a little bit of brown down into that, I think. I'm also going to take a little bit of grey up into the there as well. So on that point where it to join, there's a little bit of a crossover of the colours. Take a little bit of that into there, into stage, and you can see where else I need a little bit. I need some tiny little like dots, I think, I'm going to do around the nostrils. 
keeping just uh, the odd one as I come out. So quite dense and close to the hole and as I come out just a few. And the same on this section. Just keep the auras. Okay, that's probably why I need a neutral tip, I think. I'll just do a little bit there. And then we'll go over to... Let's try a little bit of the Payne's Grey, see what that looks like. Putting a bit of blue into it. I'm keeping these marks very small. Sorry I'm not talking as much here, I'm just trying, because I'm trying to concentrate, sometimes I lose track when I'm concentrating, just don't realise I'm not talking really, so I don't find it though, always the easiest to talk and do at the same time. Bring a bit of this dotting into those darker areas with the blue, tiny little marks, keeping it small, and a few more marks up on that section, trying not to get too much paint on the brush. Of those a bit. I've just looked a little bit again and I realised I've actually made this little bit down here a little bit too dark. So I am going to lift just that kitchen roll. I'll put a little couple of marks back in in a minute. But at this moment it's gone a bit too dark there. I'll probably put some white marks on top of that. Right, so the only other markings I need here, let's have a look, is I'm going to put a few more of those whiskers in. As I said, with these whiskers, they're actually white, but white's not going to show up, so I'm doing them black. They seem to go all the way around. They're crisscrossing over on them. Making sure they're not floating in space as well. I think that'll probably do on that. Let's try and look. Actually, I think there's one or two going. 
into that area. Yeah. Okay, so um I'm gonna look again, see what I'm missing. There are some dots that go around here, black dots, and that they each have sorry about that. And they each have what's coming from them. Or a hair. Or hair. Same whiskers, probably just hairs. Probably whiskers is the wrong word. A horse, donkey. So it's just adding some white into this now. I like keeping my new little tin like this. And my loose spot white. So that's my put. This is a titanium white. I'm not quite sure whether this. Sometimes, as you will know if you follow me, I use the jelly pens. So I'll try and see. I get a lot of the liquid out to start with. I don't want that. I want the actual paint. Right, let's see if this is actually going to show up. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I'll give it a go. Oh, bad actually. A few dots of this white. These highlights on there. So I'm looking to see whether some where the white is as a highlight, a couple of bits on those creases. And some white fur lines coming down here. Along these bits here. And the one and the top of that nostril there. I'm actually going to take a little bit of a white line where those Uh, and bring them in into the that with the white. Oops. And then we've got some longer hairlines going along here.
and whites so I need to put some longer lines for the greys in here in a minute as I've got the white out I might as well a little bit of white along the edge of the mouth there so just sticking that in a few little hairlines taking some of that up into the brown and so we're almost at the end of this section I think I wouldn't guarantee it I will sometimes come back to things when I said I've finished but black I think. Just bring some of those long hairlines there. Trying to do a really light touch. Um, I want these lines to be thin, and which means I'm trying to barely touch the page with them. Um, otherwise, they end up looking very chunky. Ridges there need to be very slightly darker. darker lines into this I decided I think I'm happy with that. Not totally 100% sure on this bit, but. I 
think I'll leave that for now anyway. And think about where I'm going to go next. I'm just trying to debate whether to do the next layer of fur line across the whole thing. We'll just concentrate on sections at a time. I think because of the way this video is going quite long, I might focus on sections at a time. So the obvious bit to do next might be the ears. So I think I'm going to work on the ears next. Okay, so I've still got my black and sepia in here. But I've also now got, I'll see the white still, and I've got um, Burnt Sienna, Raw Umber and Van Dyke Brown that I'm going to be using. I'm going to start with now with these ear bits here, some of it goes in this direction and some of it's flicking up in this direction. So it is going between the two. And I have got a slight error here in that I should have white behind that. So I'm going to be bringing in some white later on. It goes quite dark at the top. I'm going to start with the lighter colour and work my way towards the darker one. I'm still using the 10 stroke zero brush at the moment. So I've just got like, um, whether it's the actual donkey has or whether it's just the lighting that's coming in the photograph that's sort of making it look that way. It does look quite sort of almost like gingery in places on the ears. So I'm trying to get some of that. So some of that's trying to make sure I got get fine lines. Start taking some of that into the whites. It's gonna go across there. Okay, I think that's probably enough, but I think there is sort of a bit of that colour coming up there, so I'm gonna put that in while I'm there. I'll get some it's not strictly speaking part of the year. It will do. And and these this white here it's flicking. That way, the game's got quite a lot of this brown gingery colour, and I'll be bringing some burnt sienna into that in a minute. That's all looping around there. And bring some of that into the brown there where the white joins the brown. Then these little whirls of fur going like that. And there's like three rows of it, I think. Looks like oh, two long rows and and a couple of little bits going in. Oh, 
can see, bringing some of these colours onto that bit where the dark goes out to the meat to the light. Alright, um, okay, so that will do for that bit. And then I'm going to go to some of the burnt sienna and again do the same thing, bringing in some of this ready colour. I can see when I'm doing these how well they lend themselves to colour pencils. bringing some white back into that in a minute so I want to darken it but doesn't matter too much. Then we'll go to some Van Dyke Brown and we'll start going over again. This time we're starting to bring in the darker browns. Let's bring some of this in and I'm going to go to the sepia. There's sort of like a crease down the middle there and the hairlines are go, going that way and then that way from that crease. The edge of the ear goes there, but there is some white hairs then that go out from the ear, so I'll be put, putting those in using sort of the blues and the greys. That'll be the last bit to do. No idea how many parts this is going to end up as. And then 
all I need to do is start getting this dark centre. like that I think and then it's like a section of fur that goes out and a fan at the bottom there and I'm just gonna put some lines like that to be aware of that I'm gonna take a couple of lines into it like that and then on this side again you've got the a lot of darker stuff. It's going to really come out with the sepia when I put that on next. So you've got quite a dark edge here, but you've got all these little white lines that are going to come into it. I'm just going to pay lip service to them a little bit without going into too much with that. some of these, just making light little curly fur lines, Ooh, curly on the ears. And I'm now going to come in with that white in a minute, so patches up to there. I'm decided at the moment, I'm sort of trying to decide as I go, as I'm doing this, whether to go and do the white sections next or whether to do the dark round of the sepia. I'm not sure which is going to be the best way to tackle it. Another darkest ridge there. When I'm doing this, I'm not getting every little ridge and line correct. My tension span's not that. Great. When it comes to that sort of thing, I do do more of an impression of it than 
100% accuracy. Right, um, just want to go over these little bits a bit more. I don't have much attention yet. Line going out like that from here, and quite a big squiffy bit coming up like that. So it's quite a dark section over there. I think I'm going to do the white next. One thing I'm going to do to start with is lift off that brown from there. That shouldn't really... Being that it was me not paying quite enough attention. Just have a look at the shape of that. That's what it should have been. Right. I'm going to use some paint spray, I think, to start with. And start bringing in from all directions so you've got ones let's get this wet enough so you've got ones coming over like this if I can get the paint wet enough to show you the problem is I'm trying to do such fine lines and sometimes I end up <laughs> not getting anything on the page at all I will be needing to go back over some of this with um, with a white, whether it's a white paint or jelly pen, I'm not sure at this stage. So you've got these hairs curling round in like this. Set a fan of hairs coming out there, and then again they're coming in from that side. So these white fur lines are coming in from the edges of the donkey's ears, and I'm going to bring out these as well. Sort of up to that there, and then I'm leaving that section now to let it dry off a bit. And then you've got all these hairs sort of flipping over from there. So 
So I sort of decided what I'm going to do is put this white on first and then I'm going to put a bit of grey over it to get the extra lines and then I'm going to do the dark sepia and then add some white back in again after that. So I did to go down and do that drip root. Okay, so we're gonna go for some diluted grey next. And go in between some of these lines so you've got like a different shade. Trying to keep it fine. Bit of overlapping. And they're coming out into the there. So I'll bring a few out there. I'm going to do the same on this one. Try and join on to the end of some of those brown lines to make it look like it's joining on purpose. Taking it all the way over to the middle section. I just remember I said I'm putting white back into this. It looks like it's going really dark where it should be really light, but you do need this. You really do. Should be another bit there actually. Look at that. Yeah, there be some white bits going up across some of this. Right, okay, so let's go in for the sepia next, I think. Starting on the sepia, which is very dark brown. It might be a bit tad, tad darker than I actually want. Um, what I might do is mix some of the sepia in with the Van Dyke Brown, see what we get. So that's gone a little bit darker than I wanted. Um, that's a bit better. 
going to be quite wet though, so put lots of water on with it. Get it wet enough. And we're gonna get started over here, I think. So I'll start away from where I'm My brushes being a bit of a new thing. Let me try a different brush. Um, this. this one again. It's a three stroke zero. This one. The bristles had split on the other one. I didn't notice to start with and. So this is just not doing what it should be doing, and that's why. where it's easiest to get at. Um, and start working my way around all the ears, putting in lots of little overlapping Hairlines, fur lines, horses, donkeys have hair or fur. Answers oh, in the comments below. <laughs> I can say in fur all along, but um, is it hair with horses and donkeys? As you see, I'm taking some of these white lines over with the brown. What it's sort of doing in effect, it's putting the shadow in between the hairlines. So I'm going up into you know, the creases between the hair. Just quickly working my way then around it all. As I put this really dark colour for the dark value in, then the white, the greys that I put in for the um, for the white area that were looking quite dark a minute ago, are suddenly looking a lot lighter.
You just remember when you're having a go at this. If you're having a go at this yourself, it's suddenly going to get look lighter once you start adding these dark colours. It's a brush I don't normally use, quite like this one. As I said, there's lots of curly little hairs here, and I don't want to lose all of the lines I put in earlier on this. So I'm just afterwards, I don't know. I might just put a, another wash over this in a minute. I think I might do that actually. Let's see what that looks like. I've got a reddish tinge wash over that. That might work quite well. Um, as you can tell by the way I'm talking out my ideas, I don't have this pre-planned. I'm working out what I'm doing as I go along. Quite often because I do the voiceover of mine afterwards if when I speed them up, because I'm speeding them up, you don't get any of this, me I'm in an hour and thinking, what am I going to do there? Shall I do this? Shall I do that? That's not normally part of what comes across on the videos. Just purely because they're normally quite short for quite long videos sometimes. Sometimes you get just too thick a line, which I've just done there. That's pressing too hard. I'll take that out in a minute somehow. Right, so I've got that now. That's quite a dark colour base of that bit, section there. And going down there. Go to the other ear and again. I sort of decided I'm going to do a wash over those in a second, so um, let's see what that looks like. Mm. 
And sometimes when I'm doing these ones like this, I'm sort of doing them thinking it's taken me for ages. I do hope it works out because I don't always. I can spend absolutely all this time doing this and then at the end of it, you don't like it. I've had that few times where I spent ages doing something like this. Got to the end of it and thought, nah, I'm not putting that up on YouTube. I do sometimes put things that I know aren't well, perhaps my best efforts, but sometimes I don't have a chance to do anything else. I need to time and all that. The top of these ears are quite dark. Okay, I'm going to do some wisps out there, just remind myself that is white when I get to doing the donkey's mane. I'll probably get some, bring some white over the top afterwards. This middle bit is really dark, so I'm not even going to make that look like a line. I'm just going to do that and then bring lines out from it. Remember these are lines that are overlapping that way, so they're coming around like that. And that needs to be reflected in the way that you bring this out. We'll see, I've got this bit that goes around there and the base of that is dark again. So where the crease is and the hair comes out from
need to make a shadow under that as well. Whereas there, it's going to have to go darker. That bit. Bit soon. In to get the edge of the ear in and a bit more dark up there. Tell this takes time. I'm not working quicker than I would normally. I'm doing it for a video, so I'm trying to work reasonable speed. Maybe if I wasn't doing it for a video, I might do this a little bit slower still. So if you're having a go yourself, then do take time. Something here. Um, I don't think I've got that quite right. I'm gonna lift that. I'm not happy with that. So thank you very much for watching, this is the end of part 2, in part 3 I'll be tackling the head, the rest of the head, the hair, hair lines and details on all the rest of the head and I may touch up a bit more on the ears possibly and then in part 4 I'm going to be tackling the neck and the mane. So if you managed to get all the way through this, thank you very, very much for watching. Um, if you haven't already liked, I'd really appreciate it if you did. Comment, subscribe, press the notification button, all those YouTube things. All helps my channel to grow, so really appreciate it. Um, the line drawing, which is the same as part, in part one, is about to come up if you wish to pause and screenshot. Alternatively, you can go to my Facebook group to join and I have a PDF on there. So again, thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you here again.